Hello, and welcome to Healed and Restored. I'm your host, Elsa Spady. I never tire of saying that we all have a story and that our stories matter. They matter to God and they matter to the people who love us. In a society that thinks there's nothing wrong with looking to have a designer baby, which really means a baby that is genetically perfect, it is no wonder the number of aborted babies with disabilities has gone up in the last few decades. And yet, we who are Christians believe that God never makes a mistake. Every child is needed in their mother's womb by a God who loves them no matter what disabilities they might be born with or those they might encounter later in life. Today, my guest and I will talk about the inherent value and dignity in the lives of people with disabilities. I met Dorothy and her beautiful family about eight years ago when my family moved to Huntersville, North Carolina. Dorothy's family had just moved here the prior year from Ohio. I think the fact that we were both transplants and attended the same church, St. Mark, has helped us to ease into a beautiful friendship that has blossomed throughout the years. As most of you know, I work as a real estate agent in the Lake Norman area. About five years ago, I had the privilege to assist Dorothy and her husband, Rich, sell their home to move into a house with a little more space for their family of nine. It was truly an honor to walk that journey with them. I am forever grateful to Dorothy and Rich for trusting me with all of their real estate needs. Having met Dorothy's seven children, I have to say that they are all amazing and unique and are all very loving individuals. Meeting Mary Grace and getting to know her has been a blessing to me in so many ways. Mary Grace's zest for life, her child look, uh, childlike outlook in life, kindness of heart, and her amazingly sharp memory has always been something I dearly love and admire about her. Please help me welcome my dear friends, mother and daughter, Dorothy and Mary Grace Welsh. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. I'm excited to have this time with you, Mary Grace. <laughs> you and your mom. I mean, I've been wanting to have you guys on for a while. I'm glad you were available to come in today, okay? You're going to talk a little bit about your story, right? Mm -hmm. How about we start by um, you telling our listeners a little bit about yourself, what you like to do, maybe how old you are, all that stuff, Mary Grace, please. Um, my name is Mary Grace Welsh. I graduated from Huff about six years ago, and I am 25 years old and recently I got a job at Biddy and Bowes. That's awesome. Prior to my job, I yet baking, doing crafts, and crocheting. That's wonderful. I love all those stuff that you like to do. I bet that brings you a lot of joy doing yes, that stuff, does. right? I've had some of your bacon. You're a very good baker, Mary Grace. And Thank you, you. And you bake a lot around Christmas time, don't you? Yeah. You and your mom and your sisters? Yeah. I love that. Invite me over when you're baking next time. I want to learn some stuff from you, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm not a very good baker, so I need some lessons. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Mary Grace. How about you, Dorothy? Can you tell our listeners about yourself, please? Well, I... Um as you said, we moved here from Ohio. I'm a mother of seven, and they range in age from 32 down to age 15. Mary Grace is right there in the middle. I'm married to my husband, Richard, for 33 years. We've moved around the country um, with his job. And nine years ago, we landed in Huntersville, North Carolina. 
and that is where I met Elza. Yes. And we love St. Mark Parish. Yes, we do. And we've had children go through St. Mark uh, School and Christ the King High School. Yep. And um, I have a business. Once the kids were all in school, I started a business selling clothing. Um, and that is hard work, but it's fun on the side. Mm -hmm. And um, mainly I'm a mother, you know, mother to my kids. Yes, so. you are. And you're a great one at that. And um, thank you. Thank well, you for coming on okay. today, Dorothy. I was really anticipating this conversation for today. Um, before we go into today's topic, I get mm -hmm. to ask you my favorite question. And um, let's start with you, Mary Grace. What was the best advice you've gotten from someone in your life? Well, my mom and dad always said God has a plan. Oh, I love and that. <laughs> and that's something you hold close to your heart, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you understand that they are telling you the truth, that God does always have a plan. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Well, thank you for sharing that, that with us. That's such good, wise words from your mom and dad. Really, I'm not surprised because they're <laughs> such good and wise people, mm -hmm. both your mom and your dad. Thank you. Dorothy, how about you? What was the best okay. advice you ever got? Well, as it pertains to Mary Grace, uh, as my husband says, I don't always listen to all the advice given to me, but uh, <laughs> I do hear it. But um, she was born um, 25 years ago, and she spent the first nine days of her life in a neonatal intensive care. And she was our fourth child, and we had never had any medical issues with our children. Things had gone pretty much according to plan. So it was a shock. Um, we had both sets of our parents were alive and they were a few hours away and our family all came to help us. Um, after all the medical, we were in the Cleveland Clinic and all the great you know, doctors looking at her and giving us all the information about her, um, I think we both said, well, how do we fix her? Like, what do we do? What, what do mm -hmm. we do to make her better? Sure. And the doctor, very wise doctor, neonatologist said, you just love her. Mm, I you love just that. love her. You, you, just like your other children. You That's just right. Love her. You just love her just the way she is. Because mm -hmm. God didn't make a mistake. No. Right? I mean, she's mm -hmm. perfect just the way yeah. she is. Yes. And we all know how loving she is. And when we're around her, we can't help but become loving ourselves because mm -hmm. we learn from her. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's such a gift. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Dorothy, um, what would you say, Dorothy, to those listening right now to us who are in, maybe in just beginning their journey with a special child? What, would, mm -hmm. what advice would you have for that mom or dad? Well, first, just love them. Mm -hmm. And I think it was it's easier when they're an infant and you hear that there's some special need or medical concern. I think it's harder sometimes for parents that find out later. Their child's in school. They find out about a disability. Um, and for us, the most important thing was, number one, accepting that God has a plan he gave this child to you for a reason. Mm -hmm. You were chosen of all the parents out there to have mm -hmm. this child yes. with special needs. And after that, you know, faith was always very important in our lives. We're both from large Catholic families, and so it was just part of our life. Mm -hmm. um, you need that community. You need people around you to support you, practical things, friends, help you with the children, but you also need people praying for you and just understanding and supporting you mm -hmm. and through prayer and love. And I think if you have the family, that's wonderful. If you don't have family around, for us, it was through our parish, uh, through getting involved in a parish and meeting other families mm -hmm. with children. And as you get out there, nobody's life is perfect. <laughs> and we all have special needs. That's and so I true. think once you accept that, that nobody's perfect and we all have special needs, whatever you've been given with your child is easier to accept. 
Thank you. I think that's such wise words from you because um, let's think about it. You know, I mean, we all have stuff that has mm -hmm. made us broken in mm -hmm. some different ways, mm -hmm. right? So we all need extra love, extra attention, whatever it is that we need. And we do need to be loved in our brokenness. Mm -hmm. You know, so I love that you emphasize in that. Just love that child, mm -hmm. you know, the way she or he is. Mm -hmm. And look for the help. Mm -hmm. Look for um, your community to, to pitch in and help you. Because, no, you're not supposed to carry this alone. You know, it's a lie that we hear all the time these days that we don't need anybody. We don't need God. We don't need mm -hmm. anybody. We are self-sufficient. It's a lie. But it's even more important if when you do have a child with disability mm -hmm. to understand that it's okay to reach out for yeah. help. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to take our first break and we're going to come right back. Thank you. The Carolina Catholic Parish Portal is now open. You'll find a section for your parish with contact info and easy access to your parish website, YouTube, and Facebook page. Check out your parish portal today at carolinacatholicradio.org or the Carolina Catholic mobile app. This is Tammy Harris. I am the founder and executive director of the Ursus Institute. We fight human trafficking both locally and abroad. I'm also a parishioner at St. Gabriel Catholic Church in Charlotte, as well as the Respect Life Coordinator there. I urge you to check out my website, www.ursusinstitute.net, or to reach out to me personally at my email, tammy at ursusinstitute.net. Ursus is Latin for bear and is spelled U R. S-U-S. And my first name, Tammy, is T-A-M-M-Y. We're involved in many operations right now, such as opening a transitional home for survivors in Western North Carolina. We're involved in a documentary about our work and about the realities of human trafficking, both locally and abroad. We're also giving input into anti-human trafficking legislation, involved in intel operations and rescue operations. There's many other things I'd like to share with you, and there's many ways that you can get involved. So I urge you, please text me at 704-519-7901, email me at tammy at ursusinstitute.net, or check out our website, www.ursusinstitute.net. And again, Ursus is spelled U-R-S-U-S. -S. And please be assured that this human trafficking nonprofit works against trafficking in a way that is aligned with Catholic social teaching. Thanks for your time, and I look forward to hearing from you. Hi, I'm Jean. And I'm Kathleen. Please join us every Wednesday at 5 for a brand new episode of our show, Joyful Echo. We absolutely love sharing this time with you. It goes so fast. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> we are so committed to praying to the Holy Spirit and seeing what He wants to do in all of our lives. That's right. Sometimes we're sharing scripture. Sometimes it's something about the saints. When time permits, we will share lovely recipes. Yes, Kathleen will, because I'm not the best at that <laughs> lately, but we want you to join us. And if you're new out there and you've not tuned in at five o'clock on Wednesday, please come and join us. Yes. And until then, we are praying for you. See you later, ladies. Hello, Carolina Catholic family. This is David Papandria. Welcome to the beautiful season of Advent and the start of the Catholic Church's new liturgical year. Throughout December, I will share some of the plans we're developing for you in 2022. It is an ambitious plan, but one we believe will help bring Carolina Catholics closer together as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Diocese of Charlotte. Our mission and vision will continue to be driven by our commitment to showcase everything that's going on across our amazing Carolina Catholic community. Three of the unique advantages 
advantages of Carolina Catholic Media are our ability to share events that are coming up before they happen, broadcasting events when they happen, and to provide encore, on-demand programs that you can listen to after they happen. As you think about your year-end gift-giving, please keep us in prayerful consideration. You're always welcome to contact me with your ideas, questions, and suggestions. Together, we can make an amazing impact as we evangelize the truth of Jesus Christ and the Catholic Church across the Carolinas. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm your host, Elsa Spady, and today I have the pleasure of having with me my dear friend, Dorothy, and her precious daughter, Mary Grace, who I know and love so much. And we are talking about the inherent value and dignity in the lives of people with disabilities. You know, I think in the world we live today especially where we think that um, if you're not perfect um, then you maybe you shouldn't even be here do you know I mean mm-hmm. uh, just the way people are looking at abortion lately uh, if they see that the baby has a disability a lot of the doctors are even you know expressing their voice in there and saying oh maybe you should think of aborting this mm-hmm. child you know and uh, obviously we who are christian don't believe in that mm-hmm. we believe that every child is loved by god just the way that they are mm-hmm. and that god also never gives us more than we can handle mm-hmm. right i mean he gave dorothy and rich the the beautiful gift of Mary Grace's life because he knew he would be right there walking that journey with Mm -hmm. you. Don't you agree, uh, uh, Dorothy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to say something, Mary Grace? No. No? Okay. All right. So um, now it's definitely for Mary Grace and her mom, okay? So a few months ago, Mary Grace, something very special happened to your life, right? Um, I'm going to ask your mom first. Dorothy, how did you come to know about the amazing work being done for people with disabilities with this coffee shop idea called Biddy and Bowls? Well, it was luck. (laughs) Really? Um, She attends a school, Ryan's Bridge. A woman started that because she had a child with disabilities. And post-high school in the Lake Norman area, there really isn't opportunities because it's such a new area so she created an opportunity of a school where families in a co-op style come together and we have a program uh, three four days a week for our special needs young adults to meet other to make friends to hear about job opportunities okay so she gave me a call we hadn't been meeting in person for about a year and a half due to COVID and she gave me a call and her daughter, through a Christian group she belongs to, had heard about Biddy and Bo's coffee shop, was going to open in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And she said, there is a job fair, and gave me the details. And she said, I think this would be perfect for Mary Grace. Mm-hmm. She would love it. And we agreed. So we got one of the last few spots at the job fair. Wow. And she attended. And it was so exciting because she saw friends at the job fair that she hadn't seen since Huff High School. Wow. And Kind of like a reunion. It was. And there was just so much. All these, there were over 80 special needs applicants. Wow. They were, some were nervous. Some were just giddy running around. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. And um, the people that were running the job fair we're like, this is such an amazing response. We've never seen such a large group. So that wow. tells us there's a need in yes. the community. And the family that opened is has opened the franchise here in Charlotte has a special needs son close to Mary Grace's age. And he was, you know, graduating high school 
and they looked at this as a business opportunity oh to hand. provide employment for him wow. and to for all of them. That's wonderful. Yeah. What a great opportunity that came, you came across. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, was there, she had to apply, right? Mm -hmm. And she had to be chosen mm -hmm. as one of 30, am I correct? Originally, they were only going to hire 20, but based on the response, oh I think they decided to increase the number. That's oh. wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I want to know about how she found out, because I was there that <laughs> day at St. Mark. It was beautiful. Were okay. you surprised, Mary Grace? Yeah. yeah. I was very surprised. Were you, honey? Well, I could tell you were speechless, and yeah. I've never seen <laughs> you speechless before, because yeah. you like to talk, right? Yeah. I mean, you have a lot to say. Come on. Yeah. And that day, I remember your mom coming, bringing you out, and we're all outside by the fountain at St. Mark, and she was going to give you the news mm -hmm. that you were one of the chosen ones. And I was just looking at you and your mom, and your face was just priceless. Yeah. I looked at you and I'm like, oh my gosh, she is speechless. I love being there for you. Tell us a little bit about that day, Mary Grace. Well, I knew something might have been going on. Okay. I didn't know it was this big. Okay. Because I had to go to mass with my mom on a Monday morning. Okay. And she made you go, she huh? She said that a friend really, really wanted to see me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did she tell you which friend? Yeah. Yeah? And, and you said, okay, I'll go. Yeah. Okay. You were nice and obedient, right? Even yeah. though you probably didn't want to go that morning. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you went because your mom, your mom planned this beautiful reveal for you. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Dorothy, tell us about that and how you were able to get away with it without okay. her knowing. So they called me and they said, we choose uh, every time we open, we choose a few families to have a big reveal and we will have a videographer there. And they showed me video clips of other reveals. And I was like, how am I going to surprise Mary Grace? She knows everybody who comes in and out of our house. She, she is just very, very observant. Yes, she so is. So the only place I could think of was St. Mark Church. <laughs> and that was perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. Um, we, she told you we, we got her to Mass on a Monday morning under the guise of meeting up with a friend of ours who likes to pray with Mary Grace. Aww. She comes up to me and asks Mary Grace to pray for her husband. And so I said, we're going to go to Mass. And then I called all our friends. And I said, just meet us outside of Mass. And, you know, just a little worried. How will we get out there in the video? There was a time time frame there. And Deacon Richard uh, talked to the priest, and he offered to give her a blessing. They oh, were in on it. And so they even beautiful. came out the back of church as they do process on a Sunday mm -hmm. to, to make it work. And we came out, and the response from the community was overwhelming. There oh. were so many people, women from her crochet group, mm. classmates, friends of her siblings, mm. friends of mine. Women. I was amazed. It, I mean, was, when you invited me, I thought maybe there was going to be 20 people that's, there. That's what we expected. Right? And I, I wanted to make sure that I mm -hmm. was there to support Mary Grace. But when I saw the amount of people, mm -hmm. I wasn't surprised because I know mm -hmm. how loved she is. Mm -hmm. Right? And... Uh, Yes, uh, let's support her. Mm -hmm. Let's support all of God's children, mm -hmm. but especially mm -hmm. in a special way, yeah. someone like Mary Grace, who's such a love. She's always given so much mm -hmm. of herself, yeah. you know, with just her, her temperament and the way she is, and she's so very loving. Um, why not give her this yeah. as, as a thank you? Mm -hmm. for being so nice to yeah. us. And that was what I was thinking. Yes. Of course, I'm going to be there for her, and I'm going to cheer mm -hmm. her on. You know, so thank you, Dorothy, yeah. for including us yes. into that mm -hmm. beautiful celebration yeah. for Mary Grace. Mm -hmm. Right, Mary? Were you yeah. surprised of the amount of people that were there yeah. that day? I was, too. Yeah. Yike. You probably felt very loved. Yeah. Did you? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's that was yeah. your mom's idea to make sure that you felt the love for the community and how proud we all were of your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. You know? 
Yeah. And we are. We're very, very proud of you. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come right back, and we're going to talk a little more. I'm going to have you talk a little more about what that job means for you. Okay? Thank you. Carolina Catholic Radio is an important evangelization tool in daily life. Whether you're in your car, at work, or working out, it's a great time to learn, love, and live your faith. Catch the spirit. Prayerfully consider a tax-deductible donation today at carolinacatholicradio.org. Carolina Catholic News. Are concerns of anxiety, loneliness, or depression plaguing you or a loved one during this time of uncertainty? Catholic Charities Diocese of Charlotte's Mental Health Counseling Program is available to help. The agency now provides telecounseling sessions, which means that more people across the entire diocese can access mental health counseling. Telecounseling is offered through an easy-to-use and secure HIPAA-compliant platform. People use their computer, mobile phone, or tablet to have a one-on-one confidential session with a counselor. The online sessions last about an hour and include the same quality and types of services as in-person counseling. Counseling is available to individuals and couples, and bilingual counseling sessions are also available. All mental health counseling staff possess a master's degree in either psychology, counseling, or social work, and are licensed to provide behavioral health care in North Carolina. Operating within the social teachings of the Catholic Church, they consistently provide professional, evidence-based therapeutic interventions in treating behavioral health problems, ranging from relationship, stress and adjustment problems, to acute and chronic mental illness. Services are provided on a sliding fee scale based on income and health insurance coverage when possible. Access to a computer is needed to receive these services. Go to carolinacatholicradio.org, news section, for all the details. For the Carolina Catholic News, I'm Pam Cullen. God bless y'all. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm your host, Elsa Spady, and today I have the pleasure of having with me my dear friend, Dorothy, and her daughter, Mary Grace. And we're having a great conversation today on the inherent value and dignity in the lives of people with disabilities. And, you know, I wish you could see Mary Grace because she just exudes love patience, all of those things that I feel like all of us that are so-called normal don't have it, you know. So I, I, I'm always awed by her, just how she's so kind, she's so loving. Every time I come by, she's always concerned about my kids and asking about how they're doing, who their best friends are, what's going on in their lives. You know, she truly cares about people. And um, that's such a gift, Mary Grace. And I thank you. I thank you for that because I think you remind each one of us that that's truly what matters. You know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. not your disabilities that should define you. And and I don't look at you and think that you have any disabilities. I just think that you are a perfectly made child of God that is so loving, that is so understanding, that has so much to offer. And I am so glad that now you found this job at the coffee shop with other people like you that might have different disabilities. You can come in and you're in this community and you can find the support 
tell us a little bit about what this job and what you do over there and what this has done for you, Mary Grace. Well, I started as a drink maker, went over to the person that calls drinks. Okay. And now I'm uh, at the register as of today. Wow, that's exciting. So tell us, who, who do you work? with usually and are you making great friends over there i am making such great friends i am so thankful for all of them oh that is wonderful we usually have the same group the same shift manager and everything okay so you get you really are building a community yeah right because every time you go to work you're hanging out with the same people yeah which is beautiful do you guys ever plan to see each other outside at work or um you just basically hang out there we have a christmas party this Ooh, thursday that was about that. i am going to it's at biddy and bows and it's after hours, so. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. You should be excited about that, Mary Grace. <laughs> so everyone's going to dress up. Yeah. Right? What are you going to wear? I don't know yet. <laughs> uh, I bet you're going to wear a pretty dress. You have a lot of pretty dresses. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. You're going to look beautiful. I want to see pictures of that event. I will send you pictures. Thank you. Thank you. Before we went on break, Dorothy, you were talking about how after they hired everybody, they had this beautiful ceremony for them. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that, please. So they surprised everyone who was going to get a job offer by having them meet. I'm not sure exactly how they did it, but they had them come downtown. They were going to take them on a trolley ride and maybe have a second round of interviews or they had some way they got them there the parents okay knew. and those of us like mary grace the few and the families who already had the job we were at the restaurant with balloons and we were all going to greet them just like everyone did for her at saint mark okay so these new employees were on a trolley ride and the panther cheerleaders or the junior cheerleaders or wherever and sir purr was there and they had a red carpet wow. and each new employee new hire was introduced as they came off the trolley and offered the apron would you like to work for biddy and bows just like she was and of course they were like yeah yeah you know wow. and they had the red carpet and the cheerleaders and the whole community cheering them that's on that's awesome so that i mean who gets a job offer like that no one <laughs> that's so, so special they did that for every employee and they told something unique about each employee so you mm. got to know their personalities and there were definitely some personalities in the group. I so. bet. <laughs> Mary Grace, tell us your side of the story about that day. Well, I was at church and kind of felt that I heard something going on outside. <laughs> okay. A camera man coming or something in the middle of mass. <laughs> I don't know what it was. And then... I kind of felt yet something might have been going on, yeah. but I did not know what yet. And when I walked out, I thought it was at the summer camp or something, and I mean, oh, that's funny, Betty and Bo's are here. What are they doing here? <laughs> that's so funny. So you had no idea what was going on, right? No. But that was the whole, I think that, that was the whole plan, yeah, is to was. surprise you right? Uh, I'm so thankful that you came on the show today, Mary Grace, that, you know, because I want, and I always talk about stories. Stories have the power to really transform us and to make sure that we know that we're not alone, right? We all have a story. Our lives are different. Our life stories are different. Our stories change throughout our lifetime, you know, but it's nice to share stories because I think that you become um, more like um, a person to someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, when they're listening to you through the podcast today, and everyone's going to be thinking, wow, Mary Grace sounds like an amazing young woman. I would love to meet her. Mm-hmm. You know, I would love to come and support her and all the other people who are working at this uh, coffee shop and that brings me to the next question Dorothy where is the coffee shop located and 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 if people want to come in and support uh, tell us the address please 
The address is 1930 Camden Road in the South End of Charlotte. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So any any time, think about this. I mean, we all love our cup of coffee, right? And, and sometimes you go into those big good places, a Starbucks or whatever. Think about this. You're going to go get a cup of coffee at, at, um, at this special place, Biddy and Bowls, and not only are you getting your cup of joe, <laughs> but you are supporting a huge cause. Mm-hmm. You are making these young adults feel validated. Mm-hmm. You know, and that to me, uh, it's worth the trip over mm-hmm. there. You know, yeah. I'm not in Charlotte a lot, but I am here and there. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to make a point to come over there and, and see Mary Grace working and make sure that I'm mm-hmm. helping and I'm, I'm supporting this mm-hmm. whole um, venture. Yeah. You know, because I... Dorothy, we talked about earlier how there's one already coming up in uh, Washington, D.C., did you say? Yeah, they're franchising. It started in Wilmington, North Carolina. Okay. And Amy Wright, the founder, um, and her husband have some special needs children. And it started with one coffee shop in 2016. Okay. And she came to the grand opening, and one one thing that she told us I thought was interesting, and her part of her purpose of doing this is that 80% of people with intellectual and developmentally or developmental disabilities are unemployed. Oh, that's and she so sad. was and she was looking ahead for her two children with disabilities. Uh-huh. It started with the one coffee shop and I don't know the exact number but I believe there's over 20 now in oh, major wow. cities. Oh, that's yes. wonderful. Yeah. Bless yeah. their hearts for having yeah. that idea and going forward with mm-hmm. it because now they're changing lives. Wouldn't mm-hmm. you agree, mm-hmm. Mary Grace? Yeah, they are. Are they changing your life, honey? Yeah. How so? What do you think? Tell us about how this is changing your life. Well, Wyant would said too. I was just telling my mom on the way down here, I you know, you had nothing to do the first year out of high school. Mm. And Wyant Bridge opened up, then this opened up, and it shows that I'm responsible, that I can do it, and everything like that. I love that, Mary Grace, and you're so, so I'm so proud of you. And, and I'm so, so happy that you guys came across this beautiful opportunity. You deserve all of this and more. Mm-hmm. All of your friends that are there working with you, you guys are beautiful inside and out. And you're so loving. And you teach us all so much that it's about time that we paid extra attention to you. Mm-hmm. And I think this is what this is. We're paying extra attention to you. And we're going to mm-hmm. support you like we never have before because we believe that you can thrive you just need Mm -hmm. to be in your own special environment right I mean don't you think you're thriving now when you go to work yeah and that's that's wonderful and that's we all need that we need to feel loved we need to feel um, needed Right, you need to feel that you can you can contribute something and and this is your way of doing that Mm -hmm. have you been saving your money um, my parents have it in the bank. Okay, that's <laughs> wonderful. Do you have any? Do you have any plans for e- anything big that you want to buy first with that money you're making? I don't know the crochet thing. Kind of that's all the money because <laughs> okay. I am making. Yeah, these babies are coming out. Yeah, my cousins are all having babies. Oh, <laughs> and you make a gift for each one of them, yeah. their babies. How beautiful is that? I love that. So you think a lot of your money is going to go <laughs> that. That's beautiful. Yeah. See, how loving are you? <laughs> Most kids your age, young adults your age, will be talking about something completely different <laughs> that they wanted to do with their money. And you, you want to love someone else with that money because you're going to yeah. go out and buy more, you know, um, uh, products for you to... Uh, what, what do you usually knit for the baby? The blanket, the crib size blanket. Oh, wow. I bet they're beautiful. They are. I bet they're mm-hmm. beautiful. Well, thank you for sharing that. We're going to take our last break, and we're going to come right back. Thank you.
Carolina Catholic Radio is your local EWTN parish and community connection, bringing you local news and information from over 100 parishes in the Charlotte Diocese and Rock Hill Oratory. Catch the spirit. Prayerfully consider a tax-deductible donation today at carolinacatholicradio.org. Hello, this is Carolyn Klicka, relationship coach with Abounding Joy, a new feature on Carolina Catholic Radio. Our marriage and other relationships are so important to our peace and happiness. Are you struggling with conflicts that just continue to escalate? Are you dealing with anger, fear, or just feel like you need to find new solutions? I'll share some godly principles on how you can resolve relationship and inner conflicts, create agreements, and move into the peace and joy that God wants for you. Discover greater freedom and He through insights about the truth of who we are and what God is asking of us. Join me daily for two minutes of insight and encouragement for your heart and your relationships. This is Carolyn Clicka with Abounding Joy. Visit me at AboundingJoyMinistry.com. Listen in and discover why today I choose joy. If you had the chance to sit down for 10 minutes with the world's greatest teacher, Would you take it? One Minute Monk, Abbot Placid Solari of Belmont Abbey. If you said yes, you're in luck. Go take out your Bible, and you can spend 10 minutes or even more with the Spirit of the Living God. Who is a better teacher or greater expert than the Holy Spirit? In his rule, St. Benedict sends us to the Bible every day, and it's free. 2 Timothy tells us all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness. If we truly believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, what holds us back from turning to it each day? For your free copy of The Rule of St. Benedict, visit OneMinuteMonk.com, O-N-E, MinuteMonk.com. If we truly believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, what holds us back from turning to it each day? Hello, Carolina Catholic family. This is David Papandria. Welcome to the beautiful season of Advent and the start of the Catholic Church's new liturgical year. Throughout December, I will share some of the plans we're developing for you in 2022. It is an ambitious plan, but one we believe will help bring Carolina Catholics closer together as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Diocese of Charlotte. Our mission and vision will continue to be driven by our commitment to showcase everything that's going on across our amazing Carolina Catholic community. Three of the unique advantages of Carolina Catholic Media are our ability to share events that are coming up before they happen, broadcasting events when they happen, and to provide encore on-demand programs that you can listen to after they happen. As you think about your year-end gift giving, please keep us in prayerful consideration. You're always welcome to contact me with your ideas, questions, and suggestions. Together, we can make an amazing impact as we evangelize the truth of Jesus Christ and the Catholic Church across the Carolinas. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. And if you would just join us now, we've been talking to Mary Grace and her mom, Dorothy Welsh. And the topic today is the inherent value and dignity in the lives of people with disabilities. And I'm loving this show. And um, because for so many different reasons, you know, first of all, I love Dorothy and her family. So I love Mary Grace. So I have a soft spot for her. But also because I think the more we know, the better we do. Mm -hmm. And the more we know that Mary Grace, with her disabilities, she's such a love and she can do so much. You know, I think the problem sometimes is that we put people into these boxes, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, we only see them within that box and that is wrong. And I think that um, the founder of Beauty and Bowls Amy Wright, Mm -hmm. being a mother of, I think, two children Mm -hmm. with disabilities, she knew that, and she Mm -hmm. wanted to make a change. Mm -hmm. And, Dorothy, before we went on break, you were talking about at the the big um, opening that she said some words that really resonated with you. Can you, do you remember a little bit about that? Yes. Um, They had, in early October, when the coffee shop opened, they had a big grand 
opening with the media and each um, new employee was once again called out and introduced to the community on a mm-hmm. red carpet and you know, lots of cheers and fanfare. But one thing she mentioned, and I'm paraphrasing, but it, it struck me. Um, she said, once you come in to the coffee shop and see what these young adults can do and their value and that they can do this job and they mm-hmm. do it with love, you cannot unsee that. Mm-hmm when these young people are coming in for their cup of coffee, they are never going to unsee that person with disability that waited on them, that smiled. Um, There's one little girl, when I get my cup of coffee, she tells me she loves me. And You're never going to see that at Starbucks. No. (laughs) She said, I love you. I want to see my fingernails Uh. and everything polish. Um, They're just full of love with what they do. Uh, It's so beautiful. And you don't unsee that. And then you go out in your life and you see people with disabilities in a different way mm-hmm. once you see their value. I think I have to agree with that yeah. statement. I mean, it's just yeah. so true. Once you see that, you can't yeah. unsee it. And once yeah. you know better, you do better. Right. You go right. on from there to look at people with different eyes. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And not just see them as a disabled person, but yeah. see them as a whole person mm-hmm. with dignity. Yeah. You know, and and with everything, with all the flaws that we all have, um, who are we to say that that person deserves less dignity Mm -hmm. because they have such and such disability? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We definitely, as Christians, should never fall for that lie. You know, we're all made in the image of likeness of God, and we are all, each of us, loved Mm -hmm. by him so, so much you know, so who are we to judge other people and say, well, that person is different? Mm-hmm. You know, I think most of the time it's because you don't know and you're right. afraid to come up and say something, mm-hmm. right? Or you're afraid to acknowledge that, you know, that person might be able to walk right mm-hmm. next to you. Mm-hmm. You know, I see how good Mary Grace can do so much, like your cooking, your baking, and, and, and just all these beautiful things you do on the side, mm-hmm. the knitting for the babies that are coming into the families. Mm-hmm. I love that. I don't have those gifts, Mary Grace. You know, I applaud you for using those mm-hmm. God-given gifts to pour your love into someone else life you know and we can learn a lot more from you and from all of your friends that are working at the coffee shop right now let's talk a little more about a day how, how many hours are you, how many hours do you work usually in the shift um two to three hours two to three day. hours and i bet those two to three hours go by pretty fast don't they Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. Because you're in a nice environment and you you know everybody around you now and you guys are talking and having fun, right? And and everyone who's coming in to get coffee, they Mm -hmm. acknowledge you, right? They probably look you right in the eye. And and that's that's such a gift because that's Mm -hmm. what you deserve and that's what we how we should treat everybody, right? Um, Dorothy, would you like to add anything? Well, one thing that they do in their downtime when they're not busy is they write on the coffee cups. They write a message to each person who comes in. And then they also sell, like, little bakery items. And when I went to pick her up the other day, it was slow. It was at the end of the shift. Uh And they were all decorating the bags with inspirational messages. So when you pick a bakery item or a cup of coffee you also get a little message from the employees that is beautiful do you Mm -hmm. like doing that mary grace yeah you like writing those messages yeah what are some of the messages that you have written on those bags smile have a good day and stuff like that stuff like that i love that Mm -hmm. that is so so needed right now in the world we live in you know that extra special touch Mm -hmm. someone actually telling you you're more than just your money you're coming in to buy something Mm -hmm. but you're more than that so Mm -hmm. you know have a great day because you're so much more Mm -hmm. than that Mm -hmm. and i want you to come back right you want everybody Mm -hmm. that comes through that door to feel the love in that place so when they are feeling that they want a cup of coffee they just they will go there before they go Mm -hmm. somewhere else because over there they know they'll get more than just a cup of coffee Mm -hmm. 
Wouldn't you agree, Mary Grace? Yeah. You guys have given them a lot more than a cup of coffee yeah. and a muffin, <laughs> right? You've yeah. given them love. Yeah, we have. That's wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you for your courage to come on the show and talk about your life, talk a little bit about what's going on. I think it's very inspiring to those who are listening to us right now, be it a, a, a young adult such as yourself or a mom of, of young adults such as you, Mary Grace. It gives them hope that maybe one of these coffee shops might come to their area. Mm-hmm. So, and, and let's pray for that. Let's mm-hmm. pray that every city will have one of these will have a place that people like Mary Grace can come in, feel loved, get to do work, get paid for that work, and go home feeling very fulfilled. Because isn't that what that does to you, Mary Grace? Mm -hmm. It, It makes you feel like you have been a part of something bigger than yourself, right? Do you love going to work? Yeah. Do you look forward to going? Some some days, right? Some days. <laughs> just like all of us. No different, Mary Grace. Some days we want to go really bad, and some days you just wish you could skip. So welcome to the club, yes. right? It's like that for all of us. Yes. It's not just you. We all have those days. But thank you again. And I, I can't believe our time together is coming to an end already. It really has gone by mm-hmm. so fast. Mm-hmm. Thank you for coming by. You're welcome. Oh, Mary Grace, thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to have you come back someday, okay? Will you come back? Yes, I will. Good, good. Let, let's maybe plan for when you have like an anniversary of your job, like when you've been there a whole year. Let's have you on mm-hmm. and celebrate that mm-hmm. milestone. Okay. How about that? You like Sounds that idea? Good. Sounds yes. good? All right, thank you. And uh, I like to end my show with a few questions and a scripture verse as an invitation for my listeners to go deeper into the topic we covered. So here are the questions for today's show. How can we best learn how to accept all human beings as made perfectly by God who loves all of us with an everlasting love instead of labeling someone in ways that might strip away their dignity as a child of God. I think we all need to think about that. You know, as we're out and about with our lives and we see someone that might look a little bit different, how are we acting around them and how are we being Jesus to them? Question number two, do I value the gift of all lives beginning with conception and ending with natural death? Remember that is so important, especially now in the culture of death that we live in today. You know, we're trying to um, kill the babies and then the elderly, if they're not functioning well anymore, let's get rid of them too. That's not what God meant for us to do. He wants us to know that we're all loved from the moment of conception until our last breath that we take. We all need to remember that. And the scripture verse for today is one I hold dear to me. And it's from Song of Songs, chapter 4 and verse 7 that says, You are beautiful in every way, my love. There is no flaw in you. I think that is how God looks at each one of us Mm -hmm. without exception. You know, all of us are beautiful in his eyes, and there are no flaws in us. You know, not according to him, because he doesn't see it. So let's remember to look at everybody around us, our family, our friends, people in our community, and just remember that they are loved by God, just like we are. And um, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for tuning in every week to listen to this podcast. This is your show. I do it for you. I'm a storyteller at heart, and this makes me so happy every time I meet someone new that has a story, you know, even though I have already knew Dorothy and um, Mary Grace for a while. But just coming on the show and talking specifically about their story to me is a gift and it's a privilege and I thank you both for giving me the privilege okay and um, until next time God bless you bye bye